Hey Jackals, today I'll show you how to make a link in description animation that I've made from my 500 sub video and you can also watch that video and download all of the files. Now let's get digital. So the animation will look something like this and you can also change the color and if you want also change the text. Now the first thing that we'll do is decide on the duration, I'll just keep it at 5 seconds, go to the media pool and make a fusion composition because this is made in the fusion composition you can give it a name and you can also set the duration. So by default it's 5 seconds, but you can also change this to 10 if you want. So maybe we'll go with 10 seconds. Then simply put it onto the timeline and go into the fusion page. I usually start off with a blank background, so I'll use a background, set the alpha to 0 and we can display it so that we can actually see anything. And I'll use a merge node and I'll connect the background to the background and the output to the media out and now we can actually do the composition. So we'll do the composition using a background node because we want to change the color and I'll make a rectangle. So if we connect it like that we can change now the color maybe to bluish maybe something like that and adjust the width and height. We'll quickly add the text so that we can see how much space we actually need. So add the text, link in description, change the font to Arial since everyone has that and change the size to maybe something like that. To do the actual animation we'll simply use a transfer mode so that we can position both the text and the background so we don't have to animate this separately. So this will maybe come from this side and to spice things up a little bit I've added two rectangles. You can also add ellipses or make custom shapes. So let's maybe go with small rectangles like that and position them here. So I'll basically mask this out and I'll invert the selection in the merge node but I could also invert it in the rectangle itself so that we get a punch hole. So we could use rectangle and connect an ellipse, make it small like that. But then in the ellipse we have to change this, how it behaves. So I'll change the mode to subtract and now we have two punch holes. And we can also adjust the soft edge by just a tiny bit. Now zoom in so that we can actually see the difference. Because when we make the animation we want this to be not as sharp as this. So adjust the soft edge by a tiny bit. Now you can do the shapes like that. Or you can just make a whole cutout. And adjust the angle and position it like that and again you subtract to cut the shape out and then when you do the actual animation it will simply slide in like that and then it will go back out. So if you decide on the animation you can go to the beginning maybe frame 10 is when the animation starts so we can keyframe the center and then at frame 22 this will come in to this point so we have a base animation and what I've added is an arrow so how you can add that one is make a polygon so I'll add a polygon and I want the arrow to have the same color as this one so that if we change the color here the color of the arrow will also change. Now you can do that in two ways one is to copy the background and simply make the red, green, blue channel and the alpha channel, simply an expression by typing in equals or right click on the property and select expression, then select this background, pin it and then simply drag the properties like this. And as you can see when you change something this one also changes. Now that's one way of doing it. The other way is you can simply copy this one 
right click and paste instance. And as you can see, now a green line shows up. Now this one is the original. And if I make changes here, the instance changes, as you can see. And if I make changes to the instance, the original changes. So this is the quickest way of doing it. Now I'll simply connect the polygon to the instance and connect it like here. And to make the actual animation, I'll also use a transfer node. So I'll add it right here. First, we need to make a shape. And the best way of doing this is probably to make the shape in the center. So I'll make the shape here as best as I can. And then I'll use the transfer node to position it. If you don't do the shape in the center and you do this down here, you then have to go to the transfer node and adjust the pivot by quite a lot. So now let's simply move it down here. We can also scale it up. So that looks okay. And now if I adjust the angle, as you can see, it rotates here. But if I made the polygon here, then I would have to change the pivot point to somewhere here. Otherwise, it would actually animate around the center. So that's why I made the polygon in the center, so that I don't have to adjust the pivot point. Now we can simply animate the arrow, and at this point the arrow will start coming out. So I'll simply animate the x-axis. And currently this is on top, so I can simply select the merge node, use Ctrl T to switch the inputs. I'll keyframe the value. So at frame 22 it ends, and maybe at frame 28 it comes out. Like that. And then at frame 28 we'll be animating the angle, and it needs maybe 6 frames to animate this to minus 90. Since the arrow is now pointing out of the screen, I can simply go to this merge and adjust the y-axis, just like that, so that we can actually see it. And now in this transfer node, what we'll start doing is animating the center position again, but this time in the y-axis. So maybe it will point up and then it will point down. Now I'm just doing this quickly and this is one way of doing it. The second way of doing it would be to go to keyframes, select the transfer node because this is the one that we're doing the animation on. And in this case we would be selecting the displacement and select just the keyframes that we want to adjust. But as you can see, the line goes up and down continuously. So if we just copy and paste the values, it probably wouldn't look right. So let's see how this looks like. So it goes up, it goes down. So in this case, it actually looks okay. But what you can also do to make the animation smoother is go to the spline, select everything that we've animated. So in this case, we have the angle. We can click zoom to fit. And press S and do the same with the displacement. And smooth things out just a little bit. And as you can see, these two keyframes are the one that I've pasted, and they don't look the same as the one that I've done manually. So I'll just delete these two keyframes, and I'll try to position it how it was originally. So something like that. And now I'll keyframe the angle, 90, and 6 frames forward. This will go back to zero. And then I need to keyframe the center position. So it goes back in. Just like that. Now one thing that you also can animate is the text. And in this case, it can make sense for the text to push out the arrow. So in this case, 
uit frame 22 let's see so frame 24 we can go to the layout animate it and position the text to this point and we can do the same from this point on so animate it like that and it goes back to 0 0.5 and the last thing that we need to do is put the link in the description back to its original position so this would be done here so at this point it will go back so 96 maybe 110 and goes back so now we have one issue as you can see the arrow is always visible and to fix that we'll simply go to the polygon and let's see we need to have the polygon visible at this point so we'll keyframe the level one go one frame back currently it's still visible as you can see but simply decrease this to zero so we don't have the polygon at the beginning so we have to do the same here so we can have this at one and on the next keyframe this would be zero now you can click this transform and make it smooth and this one's already smooth maybe the last two points like that how about the angle like that so let's see how the animation looks like So it looks okay and now you want to make this reusable so that you can use it in other projects. Now if you don't want to make any changes, simply select all of the nodes and right click on the last one to make a macro. But if you want to make some changes, in this case what you could be able to change is the color. So in this case the background would be selected first. Maybe you want to be able to change the text. So we'll select text next. Then do we want to change anything else? Well, this color is the same as this one, so it doesn't make any difference. And that's basically it. Now select these two nodes first, then select all of the other nodes following. Now right click on the last one, which in this case is the merge, and don't select the media out. Go to macro, make one. Because we selected the background two and text first, we have them here. Now we want to be able to change the color. So I'll select everything. If you just want to have the solid color, select the first options. And if you want to have a gradient, select all of the color options. And also these options down here. And you don't need anything else. As for the text, you want to be able to change, let's see, the actual text, what it says, the font, font style, the color and the size and the center position so let's see the positioning is under the layout so center position because maybe when you change the font this would not be in the center so that's it then go to file i suggest you save as group if you don't save as group you won't be able to make any changes to the nodes because you'll only have one node that has all of these effects combined so save as group, fusion, templates, edit. And because this is a title that you can drag and drop, this goes under the title. And I'll call this tutorial, just like that. Wait a little bit, then close it. If you're lucky, you don't have to restore the image resolve. So I have link description tutorial, as you can see. I can now simply put it onto the timeline and let me add the clip just like that now when you click it you have the options as you can see we can change the type from solid to gradient and we have all of the options for the gradient because we've enabled them or you can simply adjust the color and as you can see because we've made the instance of a background for the arrow the arrow also changes 
the animation is as is and we can change the text check description now if we change the font to something else let's see which font is funky now, i don't have all of them enabled but maybe webdings and you would have to change the size as you can see and then you would also want to change the position but because we've animated the position make sure that you actually change the position where you have to so i'll uncheck it here i'll go to the keyframe that actually has the position keyframed i'll do it like that and i'll also adjust this position that i've changed it to 0 0.5 to 2 so i'll change the position here so now in this case the animation would look like that completely the same but if you make any animation with the text you also have to then maybe adjust it if you change the font and that's it for this video did you like it give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you want to see davinci resolve and video editing content twice a week and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out and last but not least check the description down below if i left any links i'm simon and until next time jackals keep it digital